History of Mesopotamia, Wikipedia Audio The history of Mesopotamia ranges from the earliest human occupation in the Lower Paleolithic period up to the Late Antiquity. This history is pieced together from evidence retrieved from archaeological excavations and, after the introduction of writing in the late 4th millennium BC, an increasing amount of historical sources. While in the Paleolithic and early Neolithic periods only parts of Upper Mesopotamia were occupied, the southern alluvium was settled during the late Neolithic period. Mesopotamia has been home to many of the oldest major civilizations, entering history from the early Bronze Age, for which reason it is often dubbed the Cradle of Civilization. The rise of the first cities in southern Mesopotamia dates to the Uruk period, from c. 5300 BC onward, its regional independence ended with the Achaemenid conquest in 539 BC, although a few native Neo-Assyrian kingdoms existed at different times. Mesopotamia literally means between rivers in ancient Greek. The oldest known occurrence of the name Mesopotamia dates to the 4th century BC, when it was used to designate the land east of the Euphrates in North Syria. Later it was more generally applied to all the lands between the Euphrates and the Tigris, thereby incorporating not only parts of Syria but also almost all of Iraq and southeastern Turkey. The neighboring steppes to the west of the Euphrates and the western part of the Zagros Mountains are also often included under the wider term Mesopotamia. A further distinction is usually made between Upper or Northern Mesopotamia and Lower or Southern Mesopotamia. Short Outline of Mesopotamia Upper Mesopotamia, also known as the Jezira, is the area between the Euphrates and the Tigris from their sources down to Baghdad. Lower Mesopotamia is the area from Baghdad to the Persian Gulf. In modern scientific usage, the term Mesopotamia often also has a chronological connotation. It is usually used to designate the area until the Arab Muslim conquests in the 7th century AD with Arabic names like Syria, Jazeera, and Iraq being used to describe the region after that date. Two types of chronologies can be distinguished, a relative chronology and an absolute chronology. The former establishes the order of phases, periods, cultures, and reigns, whereas the latter establishes their absolute age expressed in years. In archaeology, Relative chronologies are established by carefully excavating archaeological sites and reconstructing their stratigraphy the order in which layers were deposited. In general, newer remains are deposited on top of older material. Absolute chronologies are established by dating remains, or the layers in which they are found, through absolute dating methods. These methods include radiocarbon dating and the written record that can provide year names or calendar dates. Jarmo, Samara culture, Halif culture. By combining absolute and relative dating methods, a chronological framework has been built for Mesopotamia that still incorporates many uncertainties but that also continues to be refined. In this framework, Many prehistorical and early historical periods have been defined on the basis of material culture that is thought to be representative for each period. These periods are often named after the site at which the material was recognized for the first time, as is for example the case for the Halaf, Ubaid, and Jemdet Nasr periods. When historical documents become widely available, periods tend to be named after the dominant dynasty or state, examples of this are the Ur-3 and Old Babylonian periods. While reigns of kings can be securely dated for the first millennium BC, there is an increasingly large error margin toward the second and third millennia BC. Based on different estimates for the length of periods for which still very few historical documents are available, 
so-called long, middle, short and ultra-short chronologies have been proposed by various scholars, varying by as much as 150 years in their dating of specific periods. Despite problems with the middle chronology, this chronological framework continues to be used by many recent handbooks on the archaeology and history of the ancient Near East. A study from 2001 published high-resolution radiocarbon dates from Turkey supporting dates for the second millennium BC that are very close to those proposed by the Middle Chronology. The early Neolithic human occupation of Mesopotamia is, like the previous Epipaleolithic period, confined to the foothill zones of the Taurus and Zagros Mountains and the upper reaches of the Tigris and Euphrates Valleys. The pre-pottery Neolithic A period saw the introduction of agriculture, while the oldest evidence for animal domestication dates to the transition from the PPNA to the pre-pottery Neolithic B at the end of the 9th millennium BC. This transition has been documented at sites like Abu Huraira and Muribet, which continued to be occupied from the Natufian well into the PPNB. The so far earliest monumental sculptures and circular stone buildings from Gobi Kli Teep in southeastern Turkey date to the PPNA early PPNB and represent, according to the excavator, the communal efforts of a large community of hunter gatherers. The Fertile Crescent was inhabited by several distinct, flourishing cultures between the end of the last Ice Age and the beginning of history. One of the oldest known Neolithic sites in Mesopotamia is Jarmo, settled around 7000 BC and broadly contemporary with Jericho and Catalhuyuk. It as well as other early Neolithic sites, such as Samara and Tel Halif were in northern Mesopotamia, later settlements in southern Mesopotamia required complicated irrigation methods. The first of these was Eridu settled during the Ubaid period culture by farmers who brought with them the Samaran culture from the north. This was followed by Uruk period and the emergence of the Sumerians. The Gemdet Nasr period, named after the type site Gemdet Nasr, is generally dated to 3100-2900 BC. It was first distinguished on the basis of distinctive painted monochrome and polychrome pottery with geometric and figurative designs. The cuneiform writing system that had been developed during the preceding Uruk period was further refined. While the language in which these tablets were written cannot be identified with certainty for this period, it is thought to be Sumerian. The texts deal with administrative matters like the rationing of foodstuffs or lists of objects or animals. Settlements during this period were highly organized around a central building that controlled all aspects of society. The economy focused on local agricultural production and sheep and goat pastoralism. The homogeneity of the Gemdet Nasr period across a large area of southern Mesopotamia indicates intensive contacts and trade between settlements. This is strengthened by the find of a ceiling at Gemdet Nasr that lists a number of cities that can be identified, including Ur, Uruk and Lursa. Classical Antiquity, Median and Babylonian Assyria, Persian Babylonia Achaemenid Assyria, Seleucid Mesopotamia, Parthian Assuristan, Osren, Adiabene, Roman Mesopotamia, Roman Assyria. The entire early dynastic period is generally dated to 2900-2350 BC according to the Middle Chronology, or 2800-2230 BC according to the Short Chronology. The Sumerians were firmly established in Mesopotamia by the middle of the 4th millennium BC, in the archaeological Uruk period, although scholars dispute when they arrived. It is hard to tell where the Sumerians might have come from because the Sumerian language is a language isolate, unrelated to any other known language. 
Their mythology includes many references to the area of Mesopotamia but little clue regarding their place of origin, perhaps indicating that they had been there for a long time. The Sumerian language is identifiable from its initially logographic script which arose last half of the 4th millennium BC. By the 3rd millennium BC, these urban centers had developed into increasingly complex societies. Irrigation and other means of exploiting food sources were being used to amass large surpluses. Huge building projects were being undertaken by rulers, and political organization was becoming ever more sophisticated. Throughout the millennium, the various city-states Kish, Uruk, Dur and Lagash vied for power and gained hegemony at various times. Nippur and Gursu were important religious centers, as was Eridu at this point. This was also the time of Gilgamesh, a semi-historical king of Uruk, and the subject of the famous Epic of Gilgamesh. By 2600 BC, the logographic script had developed into a decipherable cuneiform syllabic script. Chronology and Periodization the chronology of this era is particularly uncertain due to difficulties in our understanding of the text, our understanding of the material culture of the early dynastic period and a general lack of radiocarbon dates for sites in Iraq. Also, the multitude of city-states makes for a confusing situation, as each has its own history. The Sumerian king list is one record of the political history of the period. It starts with mythological figures with improbably long reigns, but later rulers have been authenticated with archaeological evidence. The first of these is Enmeberich C. of Kish, c. 2600 BC, said by the king list to have subjected neighboring Elam. However, one complication of the Sumerian king list is that although dynasties are listed in sequential order, some of them actually ruled at the same time over different areas. And Shakushana of Uruk conquered all of Sumer, Akkad, and Hamazi, followed by Ian Adam of Lagash who also conquered Sumer. His methods were force and intimidation, and soon after his death, the cities rebelled and the empire again fell apart. Some time later, Lugalan Mundu of Adab created the first, if short-lived, empire to extend west of Mesopotamia, at least according to historical accounts dated centuries later. The last native Sumerian to rule over most of Sumer before Sargon of Akkad established supremacy was Lugalzajesai. During the 3rd millennium BC, there developed a very intimate cultural symbiosis between the Sumerians and the Akkadians which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian on Akkadian is evident in all areas, from lexical borrowing on a massive scale, to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the third millennium as a sprach bund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as the spoken language of Mesopotamia somewhere around the turn of the 3rd and the 2nd millennium BC, but Sumerian continued to be used as a sacred, ceremonial, literary, and scientific language in Mesopotamia until the 1st century AD. The Akkadian period is generally dated to 2350-2170 BC according to the Middle Chronology or 2230-2050 BC according to the short chronology. Around 2334 BC, Sargon became ruler of Akkad in northern Mesopotamia. He proceeded to conquer an area stretching from the Persian Gulf into modern-day Syria. The Akkadians were a Semitic people and the Akkadian language came into widespread use as the lingua franca during this period but literacy remained in the Sumerian language. 
the Akkadians further developed the Sumerian irrigation system with the incorporation of large weirs and diversion dams into the design to facilitate the reservoirs and canals required to transport water vast distances. The dynasty continued until around c. 2154 BC, and reached its zenith under Naram-Sin, who began the trend for rulers to claim divinity for themselves. The Akkadian Empire lost power after the reign of Naram-Sin, and eventually was invaded by the Gudi from the Zagros Mountains. For half a century the Gudi controlled Mesopotamia, especially the south, but they left few inscriptions, so they are not well understood. The Gudi hold loosened on southern Mesopotamia, where the second dynasty of Lagash came into prominence. Its most famous ruler was Gudia, who left many statues of himself in temples across Sumer. Eventually the Gudi were overthrown by Utu Hengal of Uruk, and the various city-states again vied for power. Power over the area finally went to the city-state of Ur, when Urnamu founded the Ur III Empire and conquered the Sumerian region. Under his son Shulji, State control over industry reached a level never again seen in the region. Shulji may have devised the Code of Ornamu, one of the earliest known law codes. Around 2000 BC, the power of Or waned, and the Amorites came to occupy much of the area, although it was Sumer's long-standing rivals to the east, the Elamites, who finally overthrew Ur. In the north, Assyria remained free of Amorite control until the very end of the 19th century BC. This marked the end of city-states ruling empires in Mesopotamia, and the end of Sumerian dominance, but the succeeding rulers adopted much of Sumerian civilization as their own. Prehistory Pre-Pottery Neolithic Period Of the early history of the Kingdom of Assyria, little is positively known. The Assyrian king list mentions rulers going back to the 23rd and 22nd century BC. The earliest king named Tudi Ya, who was a contemporary of Ibrium of Ebla, appears to have lived in the mid-23rd century BC, according to the king list. Tudi Ya concluded a treaty with Ibrium for the use of a trading post in the Levant officially controlled by Ebla. Apart from this reference to trading activity, nothing further has yet been discovered about Tudi Ya. He was succeeded by Adamu and then a further 13 rulers about all of whom nothing is yet known. These early kings from the 23rd to late 21st centuries BC, who are recorded as kings who lived in tents were likely to have been semi-nomadic pastoralist rulers, nominally independent but subject to the Akkadian Empire, who dominated the region and at some point during this period became fully urbanist and founded the city-state of Ashur. A king named Ushpaya is credited with dedicating temples to Ashur in the home city of the god. In around 1975 BC Pusarashur I founded a new dynasty, and his successors such as Shalimuham, Ilushima, Irishamai, Akunam, Sarganai, Naramsin and Pusarashur II left inscriptions regarding the building of temples to Ashur, Adad and Ishtar in Assyria. Ilushima in particular appears to have been a powerful king and the dominant ruler in the region who made many raids into southern Mesopotamia between 1945 BC and 1906 BC, attacking the independent Sumero-Akkadian city-states of the region such as Isin, and founding colonies in Asia Minor. This was to become a pattern throughout the history of ancient Mesopotamia with the future rivalry between Assyria and Babylonia. However, Babylonia did not exist at this time but was founded in 1894 BC by an Amorite prince named Sumuabum during the reign of Irishamai. Chalcolithic Period 3rd millennium BC 
Gemdut Nasr period Early Dynastic period Akkadian Empire The next two centuries or so saw southern Mesopotamia dominated by the Amorite cities of Isin and Lursa, as the two cities vied for dominance. This period also marked a growth in power in the north of Mesopotamia. An Assyrian king named Ilushima became a dominant figure in Mesopotamia, raiding the southern city-states and founding colonies in Asia Minor. Eshnunna and Mari, two Amorite-ruled states also became important in the north. Babylonia was founded as an independent state by an Amorite chieftain named Sumuabum in 1894 BC. For over a century after its founding, it was a minor and relatively weak state, overshadowed by older and more powerful states such as Isin, Lursa, Assyria, and Elam. However, Hammurabi, the Amorite ruler of Babylon, turned Babylon into a major power and eventually conquered Mesopotamia and beyond. He is famous for his law code and conquests, but he is also famous due to the large amount of records that exist from the period of his reign. After the death of Hammurabi, the first Babylonian dynasty lasted for another century and a half, but his empire quickly unraveled and Babylon once more became a small state. The Amorite dynasty ended in 1595 BC, when Babylonia fell to the Hittite king Mazeles, after which the Kassites took control. Unlike the south of Mesopotamia, the native Akkadian kings of Assyria repelled Amorite advances during the 20th and 19th centuries BC. However this changed in 1813 BC when an Amorite king named Shamshiadadai usurped the throne of Assyria. Although claiming descendancy from the native Assyrian king Ashpaya, he was regarded as an interloper. Shamshiadadai created a regional empire in Assyria, maintaining and expanding the established colonies in Asia Minor and Syria. His son Ishmdagani continued this process, however his successors were eventually conquered by Hammurabi, a fellow Amorite from Babylon. The three Amorite kings succeeding Ishmdagan were vassals of Hammurabi, but after his death, a native Akkadian vice-regent Puserson overthrew the Amorites of Babylon and a period of civil war with multiple claimants to the throne ensued ending with the succession of King Adesai c. 1720 BC. Dur III period The Middle Assyrian period begins c. 1720 BC with the ejection of Amorites and Babylonians from Assyria by a king called Adesai. The nation remained relatively strong and stable, peace was made with the Kassite rulers of Babylonia, and Assyria was free from Hittite, Hurrian, Gushan, Elamite and Mitanni threat. However a period of Mitanni domination occurred from the mid-15th to early 14th centuries BC. This was ended by Ariba Adadai, and his successor Ashur Ubalidai completely overthrew the Mitanni Empire and founded a powerful Assyrian Empire that came to dominate Mesopotamia and much of the ancient Near East with the Syrian armies campaigning from the Mediterranean Sea to the Caspian, and from the Caucasus to Arabia. The empire endured until 1076 BC with the death of Tiglath-Pileser I. During this period Assyria became a major power, overthrowing the Mitanni Empire, annexing swathes of Hittite, Hurrian and Amorite land, sacking and dominating Babylon. Canaan slash Phoenicia and becoming a rival to Egypt. Although the Hittites overthrew Babylon, another people, the Kassites, took it as their capital. They have the distinction of being the longest lasting dynasty in Babylon, reigning for over four centuries. They left few records, so this period is unfortunately obscure. 
They are of unknown origin, what little we have of their language suggests it is a language isolate. Although Babylonia maintained its independence through this period, it was not a power in the Near East, and mostly set out the large wars fought over the Levant between Egypt, the Hittite Empire, and Mitanni, as well as independent peoples in the region. Assyria participated in these wars toward the end of the period, overthrowing the Mitanni Empire and besting the Hittites and Phrygians, but the Kassites in Babylon did not. They did, however, fight against their long-standing rival to the east, Elam. Babylonia found itself under Assyrian and Elamite domination for much of the later Kassite period. In the end, the Elamites conquered Babylon, bringing this period to an end. The Hurrians were a people who settled in northwestern Mesopotamia and southeast Anatolia in 1600 BC. By 1450 BC they established a medium-sized empire under a Mitanni ruling class, and temporarily made tributary vassals out of kings in the west, making them a major threat for the pharaoh in Egypt until their overthrow by Assyria. The Hurrian language is related to the later Urartian, but there is no conclusive evidence these two languages are related to any others. By 1300 BC the Hurrians had been reduced to their homelands in Asia Minor after their power was broken by the Assyrians and Hittites, and held the status of vassals to the Hatti, the Hittites, a Western Indo-European people who dominated most of Asia Minor at this time from their capital of Hattasa. The Hittites came into conflict with the Assyrians from the mid-14th to the 13th centuries BC losing territory to the Assyrian kings of the period. However they endured until being finally swept aside by the Phrygians, who conquered their homelands in Asia Minor. The Phrygians were prevented from moving south into Mesopotamia by the Assyrian king tiglath pileser I. The Hittites fragmented into a number of small Neo-Hittite states, which endured in the region for many centuries. Records from the 12th and 11th centuries BC are sparse in Babylonia, which had been overrun with new Semitic settlers, namely the Arameans, Chaldeans, and Sutu. Assyria however, remained a compact and strong nation, which continued to provide much written record. The 10th century BC is even worse for Babylonia, with very few inscriptions. Mesopotamia was not alone in this obscurity, the Hittite Empire fell at the beginning of this period and very few records are known from Egypt and Elam. This was a time of invasion and upheaval by many new people throughout the Near East, North Africa, the Caucasus, Mediterranean, and Balkan regions. The Neo-Assyrian Empire is usually considered to have begun with the accession of Adad-Nirari II in 911 BC, lasting until the fall of Nineveh at the hands of the Babylonians, Medes, Scythians, and Sumerians in 612 BC. The empire was the largest and most powerful the world had yet seen. At its height Assyria conquered the 25th dynasty Egypt as well as Babylonia, Chaldea, Elam, Media, Persia, Eurito, Phoenicia, Aramea-Syria, Phrygia, the Neo-Hittites, Hurrians, Northern Arabia, Gudium, Israel, Judah, Moab, Edom, Corduan, Cilicia, Mania, and parts of ancient Greece and defeated and slash or exacted tribute from Scythia, Samaria, Lydia, Nubia, Ethiopia, and others. The Neo-Babylonian Empire or Second Babylonian Empire was a period of Mesopotamian history which began in 620 BC and ended in 539 BC. During the preceding three centuries, Babylonia had been ruled by their fellow Akkadian speakers and northern neighbors, Assyria. 
the Assyrians had managed to maintain Babylonian loyalty through the Neo-Assyrian period, whether through granting of increased privileges, or militarily, but that finally changed after 627 BC with the death of the last strong Assyrian ruler, Ashurbanipal, and Babylonia rebelled under Nabopolassar a Chaldean chieftain the following year. In alliance with King Syaxares of the Medes, and with the help of the Scythians and Sumerians the city of Nineveh was sacked in 612 BC, Assyria fell by 605 BC and the seat of empire was transferred to Babylonia for the first time since Hammurabi. Second Millennium BC After the death of Ashurbanipal in 627 BC, the Assyrian Empire descended into a series of bitter civil wars, allowing its former vassals to free themselves. Syaxares reorganized and modernized the Median army, then joined with King Nabopolassar of Babylon. These allies, together with the Scythians, overthrew the Assyrian Empire and destroyed Nineveh in 612 BC. After the final victory at Carchemish in 605 BC the Medes and Babylonians ruled Assyria. Babylon and Media fell under Persian rule in the 6th century BC. For two centuries of Achaemenid rule both Assyria and Babylonia flourished, Achaemenid Assyria in particular becoming a major source of manpower for the army and a breadbasket for the economy. Mesopotamian Aramaic remained the lingua franca of the Achaemenid Empire, much as it had done in Assyrian times. Mesopotamia fell to Alexander the Great in 330 BC, and remained under Hellenistic rule for another two centuries, with Seleucia as capital from 305 BC. In the first century BC, Mesopotamia was in constant turmoil as the Seleucid Empire was weakened by Parthia on one hand and the Mithridatic Wars on the other. The Parthian Empire lasted for five centuries, into the 3rd century AD, when it was succeeded by the Sassanids. After constant wars between Romans and firstly Parthians, laterly Sassanids, the western part of Mesopotamia was passed to the Roman Empire. Christianity as well as Mondaism entered Mesopotamia from the 1st to 3rd centuries AD, and flourished, particularly in Assyria, which became the center of the Assyrian Church of the East and a flourishing Syriac Christian tradition which remains to this day. A number of Neo-Assyrian kingdoms arose, in particular Adiabene. The Sassanid Empire and Byzantine Mesopotamia finally fell to the Rashidun army under Khalid ibn al-Walid in the 630s. After the Arab, Islamic conquest of the mid-7th century AD, Mesopotamia saw an influx of non-native Arabs and later also Turkic peoples. The city of Assur was still occupied until the 14th century and Assyrians possibly still formed the majority in northern Mesopotamia until the Middle Ages. Assyrians retain Eastern Rite Christianity whereas the Mandaeans retain their ancient Gnostic religion and Mesopotamian Aramaic as a mother tongue and written script to this day. Among these peoples, the giving of traditional Mesopotamian names is still common. Old Assyrian Period Eisenler saw, Old Babylonian and Shamshiadad I. Middle Assyrian Period and Empire Kassite Dynasty of Babylon Hurrians Hittites Bronze Age Collapse First Millennium BC Neo-Assyrian Empire Neo-Babylonian Empire Classical Antiquity to Late Antiquity Notes Bibliography